uh, on, the, on the screen. Okay. So here's here's our our little guys. We want to first say congratulations to Claire Bear mm. for designing and and creating um, these 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 darling snowman and the tree and uh, this is the kit um since there's not that many today you you it'll be easy for you to just ask questions outright oh no problem yeah. okay? okay anyway okay. here here's the uh the kit everything that comes um uh, in it it's it's uh thick <laughs> it <laughs> and is <laughs> and there's sand in in here too so everything you need except actually <laughs> the the wool roving because it's just impossible to fit the wool roving <laughs> in so the tree stands about five and a quarter inches tall this is what the tree looks like and the tiny snowman is about two and a half inches tall and he wears the little hat and the small Snow buddy, oh, we're calling them snow buddies, not snowmen. The small snow buddy is um, about three and a half inches tall, maybe a little bit more with his hat on. Cute, huh? All right, so what do you need to get started? Let's talk about tools first. Of course, you're gonna need your sand and the wool roving. We're going to be needing some glue things. So I have a tray, a rag, a kind of a gluing surface, and a foam brush. I have needle nose pliers just in case uh, things get a little um, difficult now and then. I have a spool of thread, thread conditioner, and you might want to use beading thread too if you want. I have my own little pin cushion made by Joyce. <laughs> and and some straight pins. I have two stuffing tools. One is sharper or, or more pointed than the other, but I want this one pushes nicely. And then a utility knife and some scissors. So I have fabric scissors and craft scissors. And I'm also going to have a little tiny scissors. And I have tacky glue because I always have tacky glue. And oh, I discovered um, um, the dowel might need a little pencil sharpening. So I have an old, old, a hand one. Yeah. So we might be needing that. All right, so those are all the tools. I'm gonna put them, set them all aside so we can get started. Hmm. Clear my space. Don't fill the sand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, you know what else I have is a hot glue gun. So um, I oh. don't, I don't usually use a hot glue gun anymore. Um, but uh, we discovered this was the, this was a good way to put the snowman together and a, a little bit of the tree too. So we'll get to that one uh, in a little bit. So let's talk about what you're going to do to prepare to make the guys. So in the instructions, see if I can push this up a little bit. In the instructions, you'll see on the first page, a cutting diagram for the velvet and the velvet is already interfaced at this point and a cutting diagram for the batting. So use those to help uh, you uh, figure out what, what needs to be cut. This is the instructions for uh, interfacing the velvet, the piece of velvet, and it's definitely not the easiest thing um, to do. So what you have to have is a little patience with, with the process. And once it's done, it um, it's over with. So these are the patterns for the, um, the velvet. And then these are the patterns for the batting, the Tim Tacks, and the cardboard, which is used for the tree. So these are the beads that come in the kit. So for the um, for this guy, this sized guy, you need 
velvet and the band. This is the uh, pattern A and A2. You need interfaced velvet and batting. With this is um, B, B and B2. And then you need pad, pattern C only cut from the velvet. For the little tiny guy, you use B and B2 and then C, no batting, and D, no batting. Okay, you're also going to need to have the Tim Tacks, uh, cut, cut out the Tim Tacks from the piece that's in, uh, in your kit. If you, if you don't, don't have a kit or uh, you don't have Tim Tacks or you, you're gonna make your own stuff, you can use a piece of cardboard and cover it with a little scrap of velvet, that works too. Um, and the Tim Tex is creates a flat surface so that the snowman sits up on it nicely, but also it creates a place where you can put a little paper label. So let's say you want to give this as a gift to someone and you want to autograph it or put a date on it or for who it made by so and so. That's a great place to to um, put a label. All right. Now, what else you're going to need for the snowman are two little twigs. So you have to go, I don't know if you can do this, Becky, but you have to go into your yard <laughs> and find two articulated twigs. <laughs> and they're only about it's like a, an inch and a quarter long for the small guy. And they're about three quarters or half of an inch long for the, for the tiny guy. This is a 12 inch piece of lace. And in the kit, we've, we've included enough so you can put a lavender scarf on the small guy and a peacock scarf on the tiny guy, if you want. So that's all up to you. And then of course you have these two little hats. So originally, we were hoping to do little Lego hats, or Claire was wanting to do little Lego hats, but we couldn't get the sourcing, guaranteed sourcing. So we, we'd go on a search and we would find one hat. <laughs> so something, so that didn't work. So we have two little cute miniature top hats. And of course you could do any number of things that you want with it. Now, Let's talk about the tree. The tree parts are this one, interfaced velvet. This is pattern E and E2. And then this is the little skirt part right here. So it's really a problem solver, actually. And it's a little, and it's cute. Then um, your trunk includes having a strip of bendable cardboard and you have a piece of sturdy cardboard that you're gonna cut these two circles out of. You need a 3 16th inch dowel, and this is a six inch length for starters. And you have a piece of noil in your uh, kit, and that's for the, uh, the trunk. So two one and a half inch squares, and this one and a half inch circle of velvet is to form a wad. So those are all the and now we're going to get started um, making making them. Any questions so far? Is the velvet already interfaced? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Not in your kit, but I don't know if you can see it. Uh huh. But yes. Yeah. So this is the it's the fusible knit interfacing. It okay. it melts kind of easily. Um, and the reason why it's interfaced is because, first off, we're putting sand in it, so we wanted the, um, we don't want the sand to go through. It just makes it easier to to work with it um, and to get a really firm fill. Okay. So just be careful when you apply it. Use a press cloth. Use a, a lot of uh, mist, mist, water misting. Um, just keep working on finding things to do. So first thing we're gonna do is 
in layer the batting onto the interfaced velvet. So this is the the right side of the of the back is face down. And I just pin it a little bit to anchor it. Then we're going to take um, a needle and thread and start gather stitching all the way around. So I'm stitching from the inside and um, so, so so that I can see that I want to just, oh, I need a little sip of water, hold on. Okay, better. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm catching in the edge of the batting as I, as I go. And the reason why we decided to do batting is because the sand discolors the velvet. So we had to get white batting. So this is warm and white by the warm company. Anyway, I'm gather stitched all the way around. I started with a knot on my thread and took a little back stitch. Now I'm gonna pull the gathers a little bit so that I can create a cup. So once I have my cup created, where's the sand, Claire Bear? Oh, thank you. Once, once I have my cup, then I can pour in the sand. I'm gonna pour in a pretty good amount. And then we can start closing it up again a little bit. Now we need a little bit of um, wool roving. And I know I've talked about the wool roving before, but it it has a tooth and it compacts beautifully. So the sand uh, is good for needles. I mean, these are pin cushions. The sand is good for a needle because um, it can help to keep it sharp. And the wool roving has lanolin in it. So that's good to coat a needle. So it will help to keep pins, if you use it as a pin cushion, uh, from getting rusty. Um, but also the combination of the two is just so nice. The sand is heavy. So it adds weight to the to the snow buddy or to any pin cushion. And it just feels really good. So we're gonna stuff, and this is a slow process, a bit by bit process. You push it in and stuff, get some more, little bit at a time. Mary Jo, what kind of thread are you using to pull that? I'm using just plain old Gutterman's thread. It's doubled. And I always oh. I always condition my thread. Where's my conditioner? I always condition my thread. Um, so that's it. Uh, it's not super heavy duty thread. Um, Cause I think that that would make it a little bit difficult but you could try heavier thread if you want. You never know, right? So you keep going and once you have it a little bit stuffed, now comes the trick to getting this thing to close up. So here's my thread. I'm gonna continue in the same direction and I'm gonna grab the top of the space that's left when the, when the thread is pulled and the, the piece gathers. So I go all the way around one time and get back to where I first started. So you can, can you see that? Oh, can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Okay. Um, so you see how that closed it up and it, and it stayed. So we will just continue to do that until it is completely closed, uh, completely stuffed and, and completely closed. So
But you only went around once, right? Uh-oh, what happened to the sound? I have no sound either. I don't have any sound, yeah. Oh, uh, okay, we'll, um, okay, we'll not. Can you hear yet? Yes. Yeah? Yes, yeah. I can hear you. Okay, all right. Anyway, um, so Nicole, did you... you go around multiple times as oh. time as is necessary to keep closing it up, closing it up, closing it up. And you have to just keep shoving, 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 because there's gonna be little nooks and crannies everywhere that you need to get the, the stuffing into. But so I go around as many times as I can and still, because there's batting in, in it, I still cannot get it completely um, closed up. So um, just, just know that that, that's going to happen. But you see how squishy this is. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you want a squishy snow buddy, I, that's okay with me. And this one is not squishy at all. And mm -hmm. let's say that this, that I was completely through with this and I had had it nice and closed. Then I would go across and start closing it up a little bit more. so that I could get this opening as closed as possible. And my main goal is to, to not do something that is uh, unpleasant. <laughs> so, so this little process also helps me to close the, close the opening without it making me want to hurt somebody. So I, I didn't really say that. I didn't. Okay, so, so you want it nice and closed, right? Uh, so you're going to do that until you have one, two, three finished balls. So this one has sand in it. This is the, the bottom. This is the middle and it has sand in it. This is the top and it has no sand in it. It's just too difficult. So let's say you're doing the tiny snow buddy, right? So that would be this size this size and one smaller. So sand, no sand, no sand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is put the Tim Tex on, on the bottom. So we need our glue. So I have a little glue, um, a, glue a glue surface, yeah. And I'm going to just pour a little bit of glue into this tray. We, you don't need very much at all. Would have been nice if I had put this in already, but I didn't. <laughs> we know all about glue, huh, Joyce? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Joyce loves glue now. <laughs> okay, so... This particular Timtex that we've included in the kit has a, an adhesive side to it, which is why it's thicker than usual. So I'm going, it's shiny. You can't see it on the screen, but um, I'm gonna put the glue on the shiny side. So you just take your one inch brush, which I may have forgotten to say you needed, and you coat, coat the bottom or coat, coat the underside with the glue okay, and keep your hands clean and then take the Tim Tex and place it on the flat side, not the gathered side of the bottom um, snowball, big snowball. So I've never made a real snowman or snow buddy. Joyce, have you? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they look difficult. <laughs> Are they difficult to make? Uh, not really. <laughs> anyway, put the, put the Tim Tex on and then you can lay it against your uh, flat surface so it's all nice and adhered. 
So you wouldn't want to write on this. I don't think if you're going to give it away as a gift and you want to autograph it or something. Um, but you could give you could give it a try on on um, a scrap of the Tim Tech. See how it look, works. Now we're going to glue the layers together. So now I need my my hot glue gun. So we tried sewing them together, the balls, and um, uh, it just was too difficult um and huh it's too loose um i do think i could could have also tried just tacky glue um but the hot glue kind of made it uh really sturdy so i'm going to when you're working with hot glue you have to be careful because it is oozy and yucky and if you and the worst thing that can happen is that you see it so you don't wanna see that you've used hot glue. So I'm gonna put my glue right in the center and, and a little bit beyond. And I do this little snapping action and that helps to get rid of those dumb strings. Now center the middle ball and you want to just press them together. See, there's no oozing. Mm -hmm. Right? No oozing, but I had a pretty good amount of glue on. And you want to make sure that it's all balanced and straight. And the gathers get, thank you, Claire, for reminding me. Gathers are up here, and the gathers are up here. Now, when we put the top ball on, we're going to put the gathers, gathered size down okay so i'm going to take the hot glue again put it in the center space do my little snapping action and position so just hold it together and you see the hot glue dries so quickly Make sure it's all square, it's not leaning to one side, unless you want one that leans to one side, and then I'm okay with that. <laughs> lean to the left, lean to the right. <laughs> Stand up, sit down, fight, fight, fight. Um, oh, should we play? Okay, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay, see? Easy, huh? Yeah. All right, so now, the next thing we have to do is we got a mark for where the buttons go, right? So let's see, I think I need my beads. <clears throat> so I have doubled thread, knotted, conditioned, and it's in a milliner size 10 um, needle. You can also use a, a beading needle, but I have found that uh, milliners can, will work on size 11 and size 15 seed beads, depending on the type of bead it actually is. Some beads have a problem. They have a real problem. They need therapy. Anyway, um, so I've knotted the thread and I've, and I've, I've entered from somewhere down here or somewhere up here where you won't see the knot and it's the hot knot is hidden in the in the gathers. So I have three marks with my pins that I don't did not want to mark them with um, um, with a pencil or anything because they're just three little tiny beads on white. And I thought for sure that mark would be seen. So I'm just going to grab a size 11 black seed black bead and I'm going to sew it from this mark to that mark and this is why sometimes I need a needle nose pliers because I can't necessarily get my needle to to move the way I need it to move so there's the first bead and we're going to do another one on that on this lower mark and sometimes you just have to um, mess with it. Oh, 
Oh, we're getting late on time. Oh. Um, anyway, I don't think I have time to finish showing you all the all the beading, but you get the picture, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but let's go up here and do the nose because I think you'd like to see the nose. So I'm gonna travel. There we go. Traveling to there. And then I'm going to travel to the nose area. Which is a little hard to do <laughs> when you're standing up <laughs> trying to be intelligent. So <laughs> that's okay. You don't mind if I'm not intelligent, right? <laughs> Come on, let's say I'm there. <laughs> you can have a crooked nose too. Okay, so here's the secret with the nose. You take two of the beads and you go back, oh, you go around the last bead that you put on and through the first bead and then back into the the space and now I'm gonna just go way over here and that anchors the two little nose beads in place so I'm gonna need eyes no that's not true okay so and let's say you you're through with the beading then just stitch your needle back and forth anywhere and that locks it. So it's it's going to be completely hidden and and it's all locked. The thread is locked. Okay. I wanted to show you that. See, I think I didn't get enough hot glue on this one. And see this one I did a little bit better. So I was a little wimpy on the on the hot glue with this. All right. Now, next thing we're going to do is put on the scarf. So we, you're going to take the the lace folded in half and put the loop side right like on the left wrap the lace around the neck area and go through the loop and you're just going to tighten that up this is really coarse cotton lace so um it's not it's not super cooperative so you have just have to work with it a little bit and you, you just want it to look like a big old bulky scarf mm -hmm. right i'm gonna lay those out of the way and i would work on that a little bit more till it was cuter and then mm -hmm. the next thing we're gonna do is put on the twiggy arms so i have a long needle and i'm gonna just go through and through the, the middle of, of the body and just kind of make sure it's square. So then I can take my two twigs and make a little tiny bit of a, a, a slit and then now see how you can have them go out like that if you want, or have it go down like, like that. So let's, should we go crazy like that? <laughs> I think like that. Okay, so then you're gonna just take and put a little dab of hot glue, just a little tiny dab, put it, I do have to take this off, put it in there and shove it a little bit. <clears throat> and I see a little bit of glue, so I'm gonna grab that off. And so you would do that on, on the other side as well. And then the very last thing you're gonna do is hot glue on the hat. So it can go straight on top or off to the side or whatever, whichever way you want. <laughs> So this guy is off, cocked off mm -hmm. to the side. 
So do we want him to be straight on? And I, I was skeptical about whether this, uh, whether the glue would work, the hot glue would work on the plastic, but it works. Mm -hmm. So there, cute. cute, huh? Oh yeah. That's cute. That's pretty uh -huh. easy. It's pretty easy, huh, Joyce? Yeah. It's really fresh and clean. Claire wanted it all to be clean and simple and um, cheerful and happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It actually looks okay without eyes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's the snowman. Oh, Snow adorable. buddy. Snow You're buddy. So so cute, so cute, so cute. <laughs> oh, hey, Pam. Hi. How are you? Fine. Good. It's my, it's my kitty's fault. Oh, yeah? Yeah, my alarm went off and she came up on my chest and the rest is, yeah, you go back to sleep. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> oh, well, it's, it's the, everybody's got the cough these days. Oh, Yeah. Yeah. I thought I was. I thought I was done. That's that's the most adorable thing. So, oh, did you source sure. all the twigs for the for the arms? Did I who source all the twigs for the hand for the arms? No, you have to go in your backyard. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> you just have to go outside. <laughs> Honestly, just about anything will work. Oh, I, mean, I mean, we don't have uh, we don't have a great garden, but Claire found great twigs. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing what you find when you look. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so that is the snowman. And now we're going to do the, tr the tree. So this, this, I think you're going to like. I think you'll be fascinated by it. So we're going to start with the dowel and, um, where's my glue thing? The dowel and a one and a half inch circle of velvet, not interface. And I'm going to put, I have to build a foundation. So I'm going to coat the velvet wrong side. And then, I, and then I'm going to stick the dowel. Oh, wow. And just wrap, wrap, wrap a wad. Oh. This is actually a, an official term. A wad is a thing. <laughs> where did you find it claire what show <laughs> what, you... dungeons and dragons no <laughs> <laughs> did you use your guns oh you mean you stuff it guns. in guns i guess oh yeah. yeah okay now now you have this little this little strip this is the bendable cardboard and we have to roll this I'm gonna roll, roll, roll. You have a pencil handy, right? So, mm -hmm. so we've got that. And then what we're gonna do is take some glue and put it on the wad. Oh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I love hearing your reactions. It's so good. <laughs> okay, and then we just place the the piece place the wad and start uh rolling it up a little bit you have to let that dry hmm. okay so the bit the big thing about this is you got to keep it square but this is how this is how we get the the um the the trunk formed so you have to uh -huh. keep it square so let let that dry Okay, so I've got one that's already dry here. And now we're going to take the glue and coat. Well, usually I use a roller sort of thing, but I didn't feel it was necessary this time. Impressed, Joyce? No roller, no roller. <laughs> I am impressed. <laughs> uh, okay, so now we're just going to roll the trunk. Mm -hmm. 
This is our base. See? Ooh, that was a fun trick. <clears throat> Do that before. I learned all, you learn all kinds of things when you, oh, I should have done that. You know what I mean? Because mm. I'm making stuff up, making stuff up. So you want to make sure that it stands straight or your tree will lean. But if you want your tree to lean, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do, we have these two little discs that you had to cut out of um, uh, the cardboard. And we needed two because one wasn't enough. And we just want it thick. We wanted to have a, a thick, like you could actually, I could have made more if I wanted to, but didn't feel like cutting more. <laughs> okay, so then I'm gonna take and glue the base of the trunk mm. to the, the, to the, what am I doing? I'm gluing the circles to the trunk. You really have to let that dry. And um, yeah, so while this is drying, and keep checking it, keep checking it to make sure it's still, it's square. Because right now mine is not square. You can see, it, right? Mm -hmm. So I have to get it square. But if I move it around too much, um, it'll be a problem. So I'm gonna just leave it there for right now. And we're gonna make the skirt. So you have a little, a nine inch piece of lace uh, in, in the kit. And um, you can use all nine inches or you could cut it down to ages. Claire is not a roughly tough person. So um, we went with eight inches for hers, but then when I made it again, I went with nine inches. <laughs> I also cut the ends off at a diagonal and I actually put a little dab of glue on the ends there it's just so that it it's really coarse lace so that it doesn't like in Sound went out again. Yeah, I don't hear anything. Mm -mm. I hear you, ladies. But I, exactly. <laughs> I wonder what's causing that. Yeah, if she's talking, I can't hear her, but I can hear you, ladies. Talk. Yeah, right. Ooh, a mouse appears. Eep. Technology. <laughs> it's so great when it works. Yeah. No, I, I don't. Oh, she is. Oh, okay. Okay. Back. Back. Talk, back. Talk fast. <laughs> okay. Stitch <laughs> up. <laughs> Stitch up that short edge, stitch across, all the way down. Try to be more careful than I'm being. <laughs> so you're gonna continue stitching down and across and then all the way down to there. So then that this piece already has that done. Oh, 940. Okay, I'm working on it. Working on the tree, not yet. Okay, so, oh, you know what? I'm gonna take a look at this and bend it a little bit. Ugh. Oh, it doesn't wanna bend yet. Okay, so I've done my gather stitching and I'm gonna pull the thread as tight as it'll go. And then lock my thread 
three whip stitches in place. And then you take those ends and overlap them. And once they're overlapped, you sew those layers together. You just want to make sure that you still have a an opening in the center because it's going to be slipped onto the tree trunk. So keep going. And when it's nice and secure, then you um, take a couple of whip stitches in place. Okay. Now what we're going to do is cover the tree trunk with the noil, one and a half inch noil squares. So I think I'm going to need a little bit more glue. So we coat the, the fabric square, one and a half inches. <clears throat> And take your base piece and start with the bottom and then push up and push in until the pieces adhere. And you can do a little bit of twisting action. So it's, it's a coarse kind of a finish. And I would do give it a little bit more um, finesse. Now, this is the top piece. We have to put this piece on too. And I'm gonna, I folded it in half so I can find the center. And then, I'm, then it will need to be slipped onto the dowel. So coat it again, coat it really nice and thoroughly. Then take your trunk and slip all the way down and do the same thing that we did before. So get it all nice and adhered. You can do something like that. That's pretty clever. Isn't it fun? <laughs> <laughs> and it works. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is take the our tree skirt and slip, also slip it on. So this lace absorbs the glue like you wouldn't believe. So I hot glue the skirt in place. So just a little bit of hot glue on the top of the trunk and then push it down yeah. and push it all in place. Okay, so there's a little bit of cleanup I need to do on that, but um, that's pretty much ready. So now let's do the tree itself. So it's pinned. And the batting is a little bit smaller than uh, than the velvet. I've only pinned on one side so that I can fold it mm -hmm. and it doesn't get all buckly in there. And now I'm gonna sew this on the sewing machine. It's a, about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so that's this here. Mm -hmm. Now you have to trim away the bulk of the batting from the seam allowance. And it just helps a little bit. Um, and then you actually just go ahead and press that seam allowance open. Then we're gonna turn this right side out. And you have to work that point out. So you just have to keep working it and working it and working it. And that's why I'll use both um, stuffing sticks. 
So you're not going to go through it, I don't think, because or go through the end, push to the end, because of the the batting is in place. But just keep working to it until there's a nice point there. So that's what what this one is. So now we're going to stuff this. So before stuffing, you have to gather stitch all the way around, just like we did with the the snowball. And I've started by putting a little bit of um, batting in, I mean, wool roving in. You wanna stick it all the way down as far in as you can go. Then you're gonna pour your sand in. And then you have to do this sort of thing. So this is fascinating because the sand finds places to go <laughs> that you didn't think were there. And you want you want the tree to be kind of heavy. So mm -mm. use as much sand as you can or want. And then you'll add in the wool, the wool roving to finish it up. And we're gonna do this, so this is this is too squishy. So it'll take quite a bit more wool roving to get that finished up. And then we do the same thing, unless you want a squishy tree, I guess it could be kind of cute, huh? I don't know. <laughs> and then do the same thing by grabbing the tops of the, of the mountain folds all the way around as many times as needed to close it up. Now, the thing about the tree, okay, so this is the finished piece. The thing about the tree is it has to go into this dowel, right? Mm -hmm. So in order for that to happen, now you have to drill a hole into the tree. And you wanna get it drilled so, this is a fun, fun part of the project. You know, keep going, <laughs> just keep going, just keep going. And you really want it to be about, um, about three inches in. So I didn't drill enough. So I said, oh, shoot. Well, I'm just gonna keep cutting, gonna keep cutting. I cut it twice and it was still too short. <laughs> so um, <laughs> the problem was, the problem was that it, it won't stand up as well. So I said, shoot, I have to do it again. So I did, and then and then Claire said, well, why don't you sharpen the, the tip? I said, oh, okay. So I went to my electric one and sharp, tried to sharpen it and it wouldn't work. So I, I got this old school. <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> So the, this is the final step before beading. And you can bead now if you want, but you have to make sure that you don't cross through from one side to the next because you won't get your dowel in. The, oh. the thread will be in the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and put, it, put, put this on and I'm putting glue and I've, I've um, tested this multiple times. I'm putting glue on the dowel. And then I'm going to put hot glue. <clears throat> Actually, I'm gonna put this on first. And then put my hot glue down. Ah. So be careful because this lace, this does absorbs all the glue and it's crazy. And mm. down it goes. How cute. Isn't, Isn't that it? cute? They're so adorable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think they should be done in pastels. <laughs> I, mm. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> I saw a whole forest of those. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly, a whole forest, different sizes too. Anyway, yeah. see, it, it holds up really nicely. And then the next thing we'll do is bead. 
So I'm going to grab my. <laughs> so I'm just like before, like, okay, here's the seam. So you can start at the seam and just hide your knot. I've got doubled thread, doubled condition thread. Take a little bite, stitch to another place. So the whole point um, is just to make the tree look like it's a polka dotted. Don't <laughs> even think about where they're going. And, you know, Claire's not a fussy girl. So she doesn't mm -hmm. like she doesn't like ruffles. So um the the beads are just really uh wide widely scattered. Huh? Subtle. Mm -hmm. Claire says they're oh. subtle. So you can just go all the way around until the whole thing is oh. completely beaded and put one on the very top too. Hmm. Uh, Oh, yay. <laughs> That's that. Pretty cute, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I think, oh, I want to show you what we're doing next. Oh, mm. wait. Any questions? Oh, no. No? No? <laughs> Damn, you do look like you just got up. <laughs> <laughs> it's everything all put together, coughing and sneezing and all the good stuff. Oh. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Grandkids. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're going to do woven ribbon hearts in January. Oh, good. Oh, cool. Look and um, so these are just, I just wanted to show you some samples. So we have ribbon sets and they're two yard, two yards of five shades each. So one of those sets will make two hearts of this size. Ah. And my goal, I want to make a bunch of these because, and they're, I'm turning them into, into melting hearts. So this one is stuffed with sand, oh. but I'm going to also try to stuff it with uh, those pellets or, or lavender. Anyway, oh. yeah. So we'll work on that in January. Just want to show you. Okay. And that's pretty bit. And stop the recording. <laughs> but we are, can the, chat. <laughs> are the kits available yet for the hearts? Um oops. The kits, um 